where the biggest game of the night just wrapped up. That would be Baylor at Texas. The Longhorns survive with a victory. Five-point win. A game that was back and forth. Baylor had their chances here. But for the most part, Texas did hold on to a lead for pretty much the entire second half, much of the late first half. Uh, A bounce-back game for the Longhorns after the loss at Tennessee. They go home. They get a resume win. Uh, which there's plenty of in this Big 12 conference. But anytime you beat Baylor, Scott Drew's Bears, that's got to be a win that feels pretty good. McCall, what'd you make of uh, Texas's performance in this game? Well, I, I, and I'd love to get Pat's take on this too. You know, Texas plays on the road at Tennessee on Saturday. They lose. The game's not really even close. Tennessee blows them out. They fly home. There's a focus level on Sunday at practice to play the game on Monday, right? Flip it for Baylor. They play a home game on Saturday. They win. It's a weekend game. What happens on Saturday night after the game for them, right? What happens? Where's the focus level on Sunday at practice to turn around and play that game on Monday? They just seemed a little off. Today, uh, Fran Fraschilla kept talking about it during the game. First of all, that that environment, and I know, you know, Goodman and Doster were there early on in the season, and it just – what an unbelievable job Texas did, like, creating that arena and the environment. Matt, I'm going to jump in real quick on you. We are officially live on Sirius XM Channel 84. Uh, welcome to the Field of 68 After Dark. We are breaking down. Texas's massive win tonight over Baylor. Greg Waddell, Patrick Young, Matt McCall is here. Matt, right back to you here to continue your thought. Yeah, I just, I, I just think that the environment there, at Texas, the energy. Just look at the staff on the sidelines. Like everybody is into the game on everybody's every single into play. the game. It's everybody, awesome. everybody. Yeah, and that was the most impressive thing today. I, I, I thought Texas's effort was better. I thought their energy was better. And how much goes into that on what transpired on Saturday for both teams? And I think you got to think about that. Pat, yeah, what do you I think, think that's a great point. I didn't, th- didn't even think about that. That is a factor that we will never know the full answer of that. But it's <laughs> we've all been college students at one point in our life. I understand on Saturday night, uh, you can get distracted, and Sunday, you usually aren't 100%. Um, but you know, defensively, I was just watching and Baylor just doesn't see doesn't have that elite level defense that Scott Drew's teams have had. Um, from the rebounding um to the, the closeouts, uh cutting guys off. Um I just I just didn't see that that level there uh, for them for limiting it getting there's one possession where um uh, uh Jabari Rice has the, one of the best pump fakes in basketball. In, in college basketball right now. He pump faked to a uh, guy off the three-point line to get to the paint, go stays off of two feet, pump fake again, get the big man to jump, get sent to the line. And those just small things. Like, they need – everyday John's got to get back in this lineup, uh, I think, to elevate the, the, this Baylor this Baylor, Baylor defense. Uh, someone that can limit team, a team, opposing teams to one shot per possession. Um yeah, I mean, the, the, the stats weren't too crazy, but it's just Baylor couldn't come up with enough stops. Uh, there was a point where Texas were just drilling because they weren't settling for a lot of threes until later in the second half of this game. And a lot of the looks were completely wide open, especially for Hunter, for Tyrese Hunter uh, uh, late in the game. Yeah, I just reading the stats here, uh, it surprises me a little bit because I would have thought, you know, Texas pulls away, they emerge a little bit. I would think one of their guards catches fire, especially in a game like this against the great Baylor backcourt where, you know, a a lot of high powered offense, a lot of shot attempts coming from the little guys in this one, but Hunter and Carr really didn't shoot the ball too well tonight. Seven for 25 combined for those two. Uh, And I think to your guys' point, it comes down to the defensive side of the ball where Texas is just a much more intense team on that end to me. Like I think Baylor sometimes has, uh, some emotional lapses, some mental lapses. And I think they are really missing the interior guy. I mean, no disrespect to Flo Thamba, who I think is uh, a player who is certainly capable at times of impacting the game on that end, plays very hard. 
They just need like a, a true lockdown rim protecting center that I don't necessarily feel they have this season, quite frankly, until every day, John gets back out here. Um, I guess from a, a, a Baylor perspective here, this team had been super hot over the last two, maybe three weeks, ever since that Kansas state loss that they had at home. Uh, Baylor had won now six straight games coming in to this game. Pat, is this one that you just feel like maybe the schedule catches up to? Them? It's hard to go through that Big 12 conference and go three straight weeks without taking a loss, let alone, yeah. I mean, let it go one week. Most teams can't go one week in this conference. So is this like, oh, I just finally came back to bite them, or is this maybe a sign of concern going forward? I would say yes, but there, there can be an excuse when you're thinking of, hey, what's our goal? We're trying to hang a banner. We're trying to make it to a Final Four. This is what's going to happen. You got you're gonna get matched up on a on a Thursday night and then a a, a Saturday, you you just got to be ready and come and play in in, in between the lines because a lot a lot of plays here in this game were not X's and O's but effort and attention to detail, coach scouting. Um, Fran was saying earlier uh, why this game was was low scoring, lower scoring than we've seen. These teams know each other, and so what other other things that you can do to to come in? You can't you know there, no one's no no one cares. Oh, your schedule was your, these guys are tired. No one can go out there and play ball, like get it done, whatever you got to do. Because at the end of the day, the record books, no one's going to think about uh, the schedule coming in. And plus you're in the big 12, you're in the best league in college basketball. It's the expectation is you got to come bring your best and find a way to get it done. So yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to give any, any sympathy for, for Baylor for any excuse to not come ready to play. Greg, like, how about the fact that too they they still have to go on back to back games? They have to go to Kansas and to Kansas State. Yeah, that's in wild. late February, <laughs> right? Like they 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 haven't played those two teams yet on the road. So pay attention to that. But l- l- let's give Rodney Terry some credit here. Yeah. Yes, right. Like it would have been if Texas kind of spiraled after everything that happened. Nobody would even flinch. Everyone would be kind of like, this is what was supposed to happen. And the guy just continues to win games being thrusted into that role and that spotlight. Man, give him some credit. Give the staff credit because you look at that bench and you look at them over on the sidelines. That is a connected team. And that starts with the head coach and it goes down through everybody. And I, Man, I you know we can talk about Baylor and what's wrong with them, but let let's give Rodney Terry some credit here for for what he's doing because it's excellent. impressive. It's been unbelievable. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. It absolutely deserves mention. The thing that strikes me, just again, I test watching this Texas team at least tonight. They play so damn hard. So yeah, hard. To, to your point about just the connection between guys, it's also just a like I I don't think I've seen a Texas game this year where it feels like they're getting out efforted. Uh, and it's hard to say that about really any team in the country, let alone one that's not with the original head coach that started the season. So kudos to the that. This game was crazy at one point. That was awesome. Yes, you don't see that. I, we watched Virginia early on today, so we know we don't, we're not going to get that. Uh, this game woke me up, that's for sure. 